Hi, my name is Go. Hi, my name is Kristen. Hi, I'm Stefan. Hi, everyone. My name is Max. Hi, my name is Alina. Hello, everyone. My name is Richmond. So this project in many ways started a long time ago when I began at Berkeley. I was interested in making seven member rings, such as shown here, using alkynal endings. And this ultimately led to a synthesis of natural products such as salvia spironol. Fast forward many years later, and we had become interested in using pyrones, such as shown here, uh, as starting materials for synthesis. For example, in the preparation of natural products such as delavatine. And so when I first saw this phenolides, I was immediately drawn to a cycle addition of endines and pyrones to start to build these compounds. A part of this analysis emanated from thinking about the maximally bridged ring highlighted here in blue um, in the spanolides and how we could use a bicyclization transform in the language of Cori uh, to simplify the structure uh, back to this indine and pyrone precursor in the retrosynthetic direction. All right. And so, of course, once we started to think about this four plus two cycle addition, um, there were several subtleties that we had to appreciate. Uh, the first of which was that uh, these types of four plus two cycle addicts uh, could be prone to undergoing a decarboxylation. And so we worried a lot about that. Um, but I was reminded by this paper by my postdoctoral advisor, uh, Brian Stoltz, working at the time with a coworker in the lab, uh, Hosea Nelson. And what they had shown was that, in fact, pyrone cycle additions uh, could be, in essence, arrested at the cycloaddict. Uh, without undergoing decarboxylation if you had a highly substituted cycloaddict. And so that gave us some confidence that perhaps we could have success in this process. The second uh, subtlety that we had to uh, gain an appreciation for was with regard to the diastereoselectivity selectivity of the cycloaddition. And so in that particular case, um, I thought that perhaps the cycloaddict would proceed uh, along the lines of a bisperacyclic transition state. And during that period, when we were thinking about this, there was a beautiful paper from Tom Hoy and colleagues that described these types of bisperacyclic transition states. And so we wondered whether indines uh, could, in essence, uh, undergo similar uh, bisperacyclic transition states. And so all of this set the stage for our synthesis of the cephanolides. So team, what would you say was an especially exciting discovery uh, that you made uh, during this synthesis campaign? The cascade of the silyl enol ether formation and the 4 plus 2 cyclo addition. And I'm still fascinated by how smoothly this reaction creates that level of complexity in just one step. The iterative sp2-sp3 cross-coupling, the Mukayama hydration oxidation sequence, and my nemesis, the methylination reaction. This led me to come up with all done the way, which was not easy, but finally borrow cooperation came through. I remember when I got that first hit with PCC for the benzylic oxidation to sephorolide F, I was really excited. Seeing that the NMR that I took matched the natural sources NMR exactly was an unforgettable moment. And yeah, when I found the soft immobilization conditions, uh, I was very excited to see that the DSL reaction proceeded smoothly and in high yields. And this allowed us, of course, after separating the two diastereomers, to obtain the common intermediate in antipure. And this was, at least for me, a very exciting moment. Thank you, team. So, what are the key takeaways from our work? Well established strategies for synthesis planning, such as network analysis, when combined with powerful methods such as those that are emerging for alkene functionalization and CH functionalization, can avail efficient, versatile ways to prepare complex molecules. Always nice to learn, nice to try. So, this work was carried out by a very diverse group of people from very different backgrounds that were able to come together and bring their unique perspectives to problem solving and to complete the study during an especially trying period in the COVID-19 era. And so I'm especially proud, not only of the work, but of the people that did the work. And so I hope you enjoy reading our work.